In the middle of 1970, I was 28 years old, civilian foreign service officer, and it had my move to Ducktone District to become the district senior advisor there, approved by my ultimate superior. It was an amazing change of setting for me and something I never thought would ever be agreed to, to have a civilian heading a 10-man U.S. Army military advisory team in the middle of a combat situation. Duktone District in Sadek Province in the Mekong Delta was a road which the government controlled along which there were three village centers and our military headquarters with the Vietnamese army and the, all the rest of it, four other villages, were entirely a Viet Cong base area filled with Viet Cong and North Vietnamese military units. And their main target was to attack the U.S. Army airfield which was located about 15 kilometers away from our headquarters, but in a separate province called Vinh Long. And in the Tet Offensive of 1968, the Viet Cong had half overrun the airfield. And so the units, the helicopter units that were stationed there were uh, focused on never letting that happen again. And to do that, they would have to come out and operate in my district, where I was the senior American official. So this was an entirely new setting for me, and one in which I learned valuable lessons about what it means to be a leader. Because when I showed up, a civilian dressed in khaki slacks and out of a short-sleeved polo shirt, I looked different from everybody else who had ever had my job. They had all been U.S. Army majors. And uh, one of the first things that happened was one of the sergeants on our team named uh, Bobby Chase, a six foot four tall African-American um, member of the U.S. Army, came to me and he said, no disrespect, sir, but there are no civilians in my chain of command. Well, I, I thanked him for his view. Basically, he was telling me, you're not trained as a military officer, uh, and so I'm not expecting to get orders from you in combat situations. So one of the first things I had to decide was, am I going to do all the things that my predecessors had done before, Army majors? Am I going to go on and be the leader on military operations in combat as we went and advised and deployed with the Vietnamese forces. No one would have expected me to do that. I could have easily said, I'm going to let the U.S. Army captains do that. That's their military uh, role, and I'm, I'll be the civilian overseer. But I thought, I'm not going to be a leader unless I take the same risks that everybody in my team did. I had to earn their respect, and then, and only then, could I expect that they would follow me. So this led to a number of situations uh, during this time. Um, we had a radio call sign culture, and my call sign was Delta Six. Our operation was Delta Base, and six in military uh, parlance, military jargon, is always the number for the senior most commanding officer. So I was Delta Six on the radio. That's how I would be known, and that was how I wanted to be thought of. 